Hey guys, Mike Teaches Programming here and welcome to part four of our API first series. So yeah, finally got a bit of free time, so I'm going to release this video today and then hopefully start a new series next week. So stay tuned. So yeah, today we are going to be talking about path parameters. So if you're following my video series so far, you should have this system. So our open API yaml file has two endpoints forward slash books with a post so this just creates a book and a get which returns a list of books so it returns all of the books in the database so i don't have a database hooked up but you can imagine an end-to-end -end system whenever you send this this up it goes into the database it gives it an id and then whenever you do a get it just returns all of them okay but what about if you want to return just one of these books so that's where path parameters come into play. So let's just get right into it. So you can see here we have books and we have a post to create a book and a get to return an array of books. But that's not what we want. So we want to first define our new endpoint. So book ID. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, I want this endpoint to be created for such books and I can give it a book ID. So this is your path parameter and it's encapsulated inside these curly braces. So then what you need to do is you need to just define this parameter. Okay, so parameters. So this is kind of defining the global um, parameter of book ID that you're doing here. And what that does is it defines it for all of the rest functionality that we're going to add after. Okay, so the first thing is we give it a name. So its name is book ID. You can give it a description. So this is the book ID. You can then um, determine its type or give it its type, which is a string. Uh, you can then tell it where it comes in from. So it comes in from the path and required is true. And that's it. That's basically all we've done. We've defined this variable as kind of global variable within this URL. And you can do that with multiple variables as well. So imagine you had multiple libraries inside uh, your system and you want to give two of them. So you want to give it a library ID and a book ID. You can do that. And then all you do is just do the exact same here, copy it and change it to library ID as well. We'll not do that to just yet though. So we've done that there. Um, you know, if we open this now, nothing new will appear because we don't have the get endpoint defined. So if we go back now, what we're gonna do next is just define that get endpoint. So just be careful with the formatting and just make sure you get your YAML file, you know, and all of its um, values in the correct position. So the summary here, I, what I've just done is created a get request underneath this URL, okay? So what happens is this get will take this book ID parameter, okay? So the summary is get a book by ID, get book by ID. That's just the operation ID, which is kind of the method name and the summary. And the parameters, we don't need any local parameters to the get. Uh, as I said before, it will take the global parameter defined here for book ID. And then for the responses, so if we have a look at the response for underneath, uh, for the get request underneath forward slash books, we can see that what happens is in the case of its 200, which is an okay, or, um, you know, the system replied okay. Um, it's a type array and its items are of type book. So if we put this here, so at the minute this is wrong because we don't want to return a list of books, we want to return one book. So what you do here is just take out the items and um, you can take out the type as well because it's not a type array. Put that back and that's all. So what we're saying here is in the case of its 200, we're just returning one book. No items, no arrays, that's it, we're returning one book. So if we open this here, you'll see now that we have three 
um, we have books, create a book, get all books, and this one here. So for such books, for such book ID. So here is where you define the um, parameter, the global parameter. Um, so book ID, <clears throat> it comes in through the path and it's required. And you can see here in the case 200, it returns just one book object, whereas in the get all, returns all. So this kind of path parameters would be used to kind of, you know, if you wanted to update one object, so you could have an update in here or delete, you could have delete in there and a get by, um, a get by the ID as well, which we have just done. So let's do a Maven clean and install and see what gets generated by our new API YAML file. So we will expect this to go red. So it goes red because the controller does not override the get book by ID method, which is expected. We haven't done the logic for it yet. So if we go into here and we go all the way down to the API, we'll see that we have create a book, which was there before, get all the books in library. And now we have this one, get book by ID. So you can see the response. It returns just one book instead of a list of books. Um, the API param that comes in is book ID. So you can see there, it's a path variable comes in as book ID. So Swagger has done all of this for you um, from our API YAML file. So let's go into the main service um, and into our controller. And what we'll do here is we will just implement the new, um, implement the new sorry uh, endpoint okay um so let's just do uh let's do, will we print it no we'll just return a new book um let's create a new book 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 is equal to new book okay and you can see here the book id so in a real environment we would send this book id into the database and return the book from there but what i'll do is i'll go book dot um, set author and I'll set that to book ID and I'll do book dot set name as the book ID also book ID and what we'll do is we will return a new response entity and we'll return that book okay so if somebody does a forward slash um, uh, book books forward slash and then anything so you know any any id any string value what will happen is it will return the just one book okay so let's just spin this up hopefully it works i i'm assuming it will just gonna spin it up locally here so you can see it started on port 8080 so if i go in here and go to localhost localhost on port 8080 forward slash books so you can see if i do a books it's an empty array list um because i don't have anything there but if i do this forward slash my book id you see that it goes into that method sets just one of our books to the book id the author and the name and you can see here that it does return that so it will re work for any parameter GI or anything, anything right here, it will capture that parameter. So basically, it's coming in, this book ID takes it and send it to a new book. But again, in reality, this book ID will go to the database. So yeah, the that's all for this video. Hopefully it's, it's kind of short and quick. Um, I might do one more and just go over some of the more important um, more uh, important kind of key values in the open API stuff. Um, you know, what I've gone through in the series will be enough for you to create, you know, a decent open API, but there are some like, you know, minimum values for strings that you can use as well. Um, yeah, maybe in the comments, just let me know if you'd like to see anything. Um, I do have a bit of time now, so I am, I'm, you know, making more time for videos, etc. Uh, next week, I'm going to do a series on uh, contract testing and how to keep these up to date. So yeah, 
you know subscribe if you if you want to um and yeah just stay tuned give it a like if it helped you and uh, i will see you next time